delighted to have with us the Foreign Minister of Lithuania, Linus Linkevichis. And Linus, it's, it's a real pleasure and treat for us for you to take time out of your very busy schedule to join us. Very important, I think, for the leading foreign policy representative of Lithuania to be here in Georgia to, I think, share some of the experiences that have worked for your country recognizing that you still have enormous challenges ahead, not least your neighbor, big neighbor. Um, and More neighbors. Uh, more neighbors, yes. Um, but um, tell, us, tell us the important role that NATO and the EU played in Lithuania's transition when it regained its independence in 1991 and how that has helped solidify Lithuania's place returning to Europe. First, uh, I'm really pleased to be back to Georgia and always happy to be here to see so many familiar faces, especially valuable when I can see from position from opposition, which is always when I'm talking about issues of Euro-Atlantic integration of Georgian choice. I'm always saying that we'll never, never expose something and imply anything from, from, from a side, uh, just will help uh, in the areas where Georgians would like to be helped. But the main, uh, answering to your question, what was the main lesson learned by us and the message which could be sent to you, Georgians basically, try to consolidate these pro-Euro-Atlantic forces, which are not, they are maybe sufficient one can say, but really not too many, and they are really, really not united. And when you're wasting time in fighting each other, uh, it's uh, always such a pity view from, from a side. And I really wish you to stop doing that. Of course you will fight. Of course you will uh, political discussions and they will be ongoing. But it's very important. It's a must, especially now. When the situation is such an intense, uh, different around, you cannot, cannot afford uh, to, to, to have this privilege. And this is also a lesson by us, as you said, what helped. In the very beginning of our choice, in the very beginning, in the early 90s, it was also, so to say, just after the revolution, uh, everyone was very enthusiastic and the position and opposition were even not having coffee together. I'm not saying about something else. But we managed to build this uh, foundation for our cooperation and uh, for defining this common, common, so to say, priorities at, from the, at the outset of the process. And uh, that has to do with everything and also the approach was uh, and choice it was uh, very important uh, to, to say that we were not complaining we were not uh, looking for those who are guilty we tried to use all uh, leverages and tools in our possession to, to reach the goal that's also true so that helped since very beginning since 94 literally speaking so but part of the key to your country's success was also joining forces with Latvia and Estonia and coming in as, as a trio. If you were to advise Georgia, does it make sense for Georgia to pursue deeper integration on its own, or should it be trying to do so with Ukraine and Moldova in particular, um, and trying to come in as a collective? Well, when appropriate, it's very nice bureaucratic saying, it's always very useful. <laughs> but talking regionally, you know, in our case, we, again, we are we were very, really very, very vulnerable in our Baltic region. We all know and everyone knows how it was difficult to break this, these ices and, you know, to, to show not only our commitment, but also make others believe that we can be members of EU, members of NATO. It was kind of psychological evolution. Uh, so really, but we were lucky because we had really very good common positions on many issues. Well, of course, we are different countries, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, but we are really much more in common since the very beginning. And we started to, to, to build very concrete projects which were not in vain, uh, and later it was used. Now it's used, by the way. Uh, from my previous life as defense minister, I can proudly say that uh, projects like multi battalion, uh, it was just started started very uh, very 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 slowly in 94 so many years ago now it's not existing anymore this battalion but we already have this training system and also streamlined and defined priorities which we needed uh, and areas where we needed the assistance and then we uh, arranged with specific specific model of multilateral co co cooperation which could be used in other regions when meeting re recipients like us and donors uh, and sitting by the same table and trying to define which areas are uh, better for them to help. 
we started other projects of airspace control, of naval cooperation, of, of uh, training, uh, or, or so to say education, like Baltic Defense College in, in Tartu still existing, or both, both net project of airspace cooperation, now it's used for air policing in Baltic states. Everything what was invested so many years ago, not in vain. So this is really beauty of this multilateral cooperation. But again, uh, uh, Stefan so elegantly explained uh, why these three Caucasian countries are so different. So maybe they cannot create some kind of coalition in this regard. But let's not not go. Let's do our homework here. Let's build coalition here in Georgia. Let's let's uh, think how we can accumulate resources and to do the best. And again, my advice, I, I said that many times, privately, publicly, but I can repeat uh, many more times. I can imagine, and I am a politician myself, I know what that means, uh, fight between parties. Uh, I know what that means. But think about Georgia also. If you're delivering some messages, if you're sending some messages outside, think about Georgia. Not, not, not necessarily uh, all bad messages will create impression, positive impression, and will help uh, you, you know, to be assisted. Maybe it's too blunt, maybe not politically correct what I said, but we are usually talking very uh, frankly with our friends, and I'm using this opportunity just to repeat. We need you in your Atlantic family. It's your choice. Uh, and uh, our, our duty maybe to help you, but this is very important. So it has to do with the efforts at the beginning, and if you ask me our experience, so my, my message is like that, very simple. So would you describe from where you sit in Vilnius? I sit in Tbilisi now, which I'm pleasure. You do it's sit in Tbilisi, nice. and I sit next to you in Tbilisi. Um, also not, not bad. Yes. These are interesting observations yeah. we're making, but not, <laughs> but not very relevant to our discussion. Um, but when you sit normally in Vilnius, do, do you see the biggest obstacles to George's aspirations, as you were just describing, the infighting, the domestic? Or do you see, as we were just talking in the previous panel with Stefan, that there are members of your organization, since you're now both part of the EU and NATO, who just think that Georgia is a step too far, it would be provocative, they're finding excuses for whatever the reason may be, uh, it, or is it a combination of the two? What do you mean provocative, you know? Uh, I would say, again, not a big secret, we maybe can understand Georgians better than others, uh, for many reasons, let's not elaborate on that. So in Vilnius, when sitting in Vilnius, so looking at the uh, things uh, more more simple, more more clear, and maybe that's it. But if I'm talking about the mood uh, in, in, inside the organization, Organizations we belong, uh, NATO, European Union discussions. Uh, people are not informed uh, to, 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 the, to the details to, to, to the extent which could be really sufficient to understand all these nuances, and that creates uh, the problematic. You know, that, that's my point. So I'm not over dramatizing. Uh, also trying not to not to under, underestimate because it's just a factor to, to be taken into account. Nothing more. And it's doable, by the way. It's really doable. You know, it's a beauty of, uh, of, of you can deny what I'm saying or correct, but I, I believe that you are really uh, not very friendly in this position of position game uh, in, in many aspects, to put it mildly. I'm always saying that's not, a, not, 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 not so necessary to put in jail your position, so to say, people. And again, our example shows that, you know, you see, by the way, Ambassador Gigis Pavilonis, he's Ambassador at large in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, running for elections on opposition party. I should put him in jail probably for that. <laughs> but, but probably will not Probably not. I don't know yet, but now he's a friend. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a friend, I would hold on. Yeah, but you know, the point is that it's possible to fight with the position of the methods and means, which is really less painful and more, more convincing to others, you know, this is very important. And more to say, uh, wasting time, you know, that's, that's a pity. We have to accumulate resources and really you have, uh, I believe, I personally believe what, what uh, Speaker of Parliament said, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe that they really uh, sincerely would like to integrate Georgia in the Euro-Atlantic family. I, I do believe. Others, believe me, have some doubts. So they have a right to have these doubts, so let's not be nervous, just, just, let's talk, let's go. Members of Parliament should go, talk, discuss, and we will help here. Yeah, but this is, this is very important to understand the station and environment around is not better. I would say it's even worse. And when you said in the title of all these discussions, I understand Europe whole and free, it's a very big challenge, but by far not yet implemented. By far not yet implemented, and there are very concrete reasons for that. I, I believe these reasons are also related to Georgia. 
not not because of Georgia, but because of lessons which were not learned by us, I would say. Not learned after war in 2008, when part of Georgia was occupied. Not learned by us because we issued some statements, uh, demands, uh, and uh, they were very right, by the way. But we just uh, complied with this new, new, new change, the situation very, very quickly, and that was what I mean: lessons not learned. And and now we had the repetition in Crimea. We will have, uh, sorry for that, but we will have elsewhere, and we'll be surprised what happened. But that happened because we didn't learn the lessons. And what, one more point: uh, if, if we're talking about the structure, the political security architecture, which was undermined by Russia, Russia recently. It's not, uh, it's not too offensive to say that, because it's true. The me member of UN Security Council, Security Council which is supposed to be on guard of peace system in the world, and legal, the, yeah, only, legal, the only legal permanent mem member that I mean, with veto right, uh, conducting aggression against member, the, the, the neighbor, uh, denying uh, the facts, denying what, what's uh, going on, not, not even uh, having uh, anything to do with that. Yeah. And this is, this is something we have to think about together, by the way. And, and this has really exactly changed the situation completely. Also, also these uh, threats are not uh, only conventional, you know. Uh, again, all our experts, I will not repeat to this uh, obvious things that it's hybrid threats, right? If we were talking about tanks, APCs, uh, planes, we're counting uh, in the context of the CFE, it's already, already dead because of Russian attitude, by the way. But now we have information war, what we're losing. We're capable to win, but we are losing. There are other uh, aspects why, why, why it is so, but this is true. Or, or let's say cyber, cyber becoming the threat. And cyber, cyber attacks can undermine not only banking systems theoretically, but also undermine foundations of states, which could be even considered as Article 5, I can contemplate, if, if it's really theoretically speaking. Uh, or energy, energy. Uh, who, who, who else than Georgians know what that means? And we, the Kenyans, also know, because since uh, recently we, have, we were really completely island uh, with regard to the energy, and now not anymore because of our energy terminal. But energy, is a, it's really hybrid. And in this uh, very, very difficult environment, we are acting and wasting time sometimes for these really not uh, so important and priority tasks, uh, which are understandable politically, but not, not, not so to say it could be legitimate in the, in the current environment. So NATO in the past few weeks has set up centers in six countries, including in Lithuania, but also here in Georgia. And the Russian foreign ministry had this reaction. We consider this move as a continuation of the provocative policy of the alliance aimed at expanding its geopolitical influence. Placing this NATO military facility in Georgia will become a substantial destabilizing factor for security in the region. How would you respond to that? I would invite not to pay much attention to these statements because they are really groundless and not for the first time. Uh, the methods uh, very, very, very simple chosen by our colleagues, uh, just this mirror methodology, I would say. They're blaming others for doing themselves, very simple. And they're doing the same in Ukraine, they're doing with regard to this activity, or let's say, okay, a couple, couple just uh, numbers which maybe will not impress anyone and will, they will continue the same, but this activity. The um, Russian Ministry of Defense announced recently that they were going to conduct 4,000 exercises. In NATO, we have something less than 300, just to compare. Right. Uh, during the last years, they had five exercises exceeding the number of participants of more than 100,000 100, troops. N never n like that in, in NATO context. Or, or military activity by, by the borders. I, I'm not saying that violating borders, but close to the borders, which is also provoking and has, uh, has to do with the security, overall security, not necessarily militarily. Uh, over flights uh, by, by, by the airspace, so intensive that uh, times, uh, times more than uh, no, normal, or, or close to the accidents be because of civil aviation. We'll start thinking uh, after something will happen, as we used to do. Uh, not yet. But you know, these over flights, uh, I'm always comparing with a very simple thing, like, you know, if you're going along the highway, uh, night time, 200 kilometers per, per hour without lights. It's the same, same story because they're usually flying without transponders, uh, they crossing these routes of civil, civil aviation, and this is really a big deal. So it's not just confidence building measure, non-confidence non building. It's also very practically uh, vulnerable uh, area, but we're not talking sufficiently to that. Or naval cooperation. By the way, again, recently, 
uh, <laughs> it was some 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 pause. Now they again uh, making very interesting movements in the Baltic Sea, uh, close to our territorial water, uh, and also also including including our economical waters, which is uh, not a big deal. It's a free sailing; everyone can do that. Even military ships can sail. It's really not prohibited if it's reported properly. But usually they reporting area. I'm just just an example. Usually they are not reporting uh, that they will are going to enter our economic zone, but de facto they are doing that, and more to say, ordering uh, civilian ships uh, to change the course. Because uh, you know they will be shooting exercises. You better leave the, leave the area, and these ships surprisingly, of course, leaving leaving the area because, but they are involved in some construction, for instance, of cable uh, with Sweden, such as such, such a such a subtle thing, or, or, or doing some other commercial uh, activities, and this is done deliberately just to get us nervous probably to check what we will do you know so what what that confidence building and we should be involved in this war war, war of words uh, to, to, to deny what they're stating I, I would advise not to do that same with regard to these activities and footprint on the territories we are proud and happy that we have these elements of hq in six six countries which is really uh, exactly what we agreed in NATO summit in Wales. It's a part of the package. It's not the only one, but nevertheless. But I'm so happy that you have joint training center in Georgia. It's exactly what you need. And again, one more message to you. Stop complaining. Uh, stop pointing to who is uh, guilty and did not enough. Do yourself. You have all leverage in your possession. As uh, Stefan mentioned, since 2008, you uh, have a promise of membership, which is politically sufficient. To have a promise like that, it's really a big deal. Uh, Lithuania never ever had such a promise, by the way. Vice versa, we were told that we will never never be members. Just to re uplift our motivation, just to mention you, right? You, you have a different promise, and and uh, you have all leverages. You have commission with NATO. You have you have this training center. You have this package, how it's called, substantial or whatever. Uh, not so important. So time will come, and I'm always saying, stop complaining. Do your job. Time will come. Not tomorrow, obviously. We see the situation, but this is not so dramatic. So keep moving. Unite your forces. We will not just stand by. Stand by is wrong. We will be active. We will be proactive. We will not be standing. But this is really we cannot do for you some things. But if you do, we'll be more than happy to to assist. All right, we have time for one or two questions. Gentlemen, right there, if you go to the mic, that would be great. And in the back, if you can come up to the mic, and we will take your two questions, and then we'll break. Please go right ahead. Georgi Oshakomadze, Trans-Caspian Pipeline, Project of Common Interest of the EU. Well, Your Excellency, you mentioned energy. And uh, when we discuss about Europe whole and free, uh, we frequently come to the understanding that this common energy policy is one of the stumbling blocks, which really frequently creates a problem. Whether this was Greece or Bulgaria or sometimes, uh, energy is a channel through which the problems are exported from Russia and uh, frequently this is associated with the export of the corruption. Uh, and uh, as far as it's recognized now, it's a huge problem with a number of European, even European countries, members of NATO. What do you think? Was a, would Russia be using energy instruments in Georgia? Would uh, this will be kind of mm, continuation of this gas saga, which we know now is the uh, <clears throat> uh, Baltic Sea, Nord Stream 2, to kind of also make redundant the Southern Gas Corridor, or this famous liberal energy empire, which allowed Russian companies to dominate in the energy sector of Georgia entirely. Okay, let's take the other one and then we can answer both. Please, go ahead. You might need to flip. Yeah, come on up to this one. That one works. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Levando Lidze, Georgia's former ambassador to NATO and uh, founding director of uh, Georgian Center for Security and Development. First of all, let me express my deep appreciation for Lithuania's very strong and valuable support to Georgia's Euro Atlantic. Uh, uh, integration process and of course for your personal engagement in this process. So you pretty covered on Georgia's NATO membership uh, uh, track, but let me ask you one question. So we all understand the importance of strategic patience. We all understand of, uh, of course that we need to stop complaining as well because it's a matter of, it's a point of uh, momentum when we need to be ready for it, but uh, it's also bearing in mind uh, the Russia's uh, 
efforts to develop New Georgia anti-Western sentiment and to derail Georgia from our uh, NATO membership track, uh, you know, it's also important to demonstrate the irreversibility of this process. And uh, while we are approaching the next uh, foreign ministerial in December and also the next NATO summit in Wales, how would you assess the possible prospects for Georgia to take the next step on this, pro uh, on this track? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, energy and NATO. Energy. Energy is like, you know, blood system and the organism. You can be a member of NATO, of, of whatever, of the EU, but if you will be dependent on single source, for instance, or, or that, that will create a big problems. And, and uh, you asked whether Russia will use it. It used already before, so why not in the future? It was very successfully done, by the way. And currently, even uh, with the assistance, uh, sorry for mentioning that, some our Western companies uh, about to build uh, Nord Stream number two, uh, with the one uh, reason to skip Ukraine. It's very uh, economically, it's not proved uh, at all, but politically, uh, quite clear. By the way, uh, very detrimental. And there are more and more aspects what we're not going now to discuss in details, but this is, this is really the case. So the only way to, 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 to make a difference in interconnections, framework, uh, connectivity, diversity, and uh, all this LNG, LNG, so to say, framework is very important uh, as uh, from our, our experience. And uh, I, I mentioned this terminal which was built in our seaport. We're really looking for the routes how to uh, even, even uh, not, not being big quantities, but at least to have some smell of diversity very important to, to choose these routes. We'd like to uh, have our LNG gas, not our, but uh, given uh, through our uh, terminal somehow to, to bring it to the, to the Black Sea, that would be nice, but Bosphorus, it's a problematic uh, passage. Uh, many, many issues, but we have to do uh, together uh, our efforts in order to make a difference. I know that there's possibility to have some LNG gas also in, uh, in Georgia, maybe, uh, and also uh, try, try, try to transport in the region. So this is really something we have to do together. And energy uh, union, what we are doing in the European Union, it's one of the priority uh, through all our activities as being uh, have, holding presidents in, in the Council of the European Union and, and uh, elsewhere, we are re really, really putting uh, emphasis on this on this priority in the future. So I would advise also Georgian uh, government, knowing that there are some uh, commitments also financial, knowing how it's subtle, but just to show positive attitude towards dialogue with European institutions in this regard, because it's very important. It's important it's investment for the future. Uh, talking about strategic patience, and I like this uh, terminology, especially in Caucasus. I know what means patience, <laughs> and we know how we are patient. <laughs> Sometimes we too. We are southern, southern uh, part of Baltic states. We're also very hot, you know, sometimes, <laughs> really. We, we know, we understand you, so. But patience is not enough, you know. Patience is not enough. Uh, you should be motivated, keep moving, and as I said, uh, to do your best in order to make a difference. And, uh, and in, this, in, this, in this regard, uh, in my view, you moved ahead. It will compare uh, the involvement of Georgia if Georgia in NATO business. There is today more Georgia in NATO, more NATO in Georgia, to put it simple. This is exactly what we need. How long uh, time needed in order, in order, in order to achieve uh, something? Uh, you don't agree with me. Uh, okay, you have a right. To, if you have better proposal, I, I'm, I'm ready to listen to you. I'm ready to listen to you. But the better, but the better proposal will be to use existing leverages and achieve something. And also, very important, uh, not to overpromise. Better to uh, underpromise and overdo. This is really a very simple formula for public, by the way. What we are not doing so far, uh, frankly speaking, I don't know why. Maybe it's uh, some some special ideas, uh, but that's better better to do to be more realistic and really move ahead. And uh, I believe uh, that will come uh, when nobody knows. As I said, according to our example, just I have moral right to say that because we were told you will never be members of NATO. I will repeat it. It, it was told to me uh, personally many times. Then I was defense minister also. In such a promise and motivation, we conducted reforms. We did our best, although. Uh, Many people believe we will do that. And this uh, time came after a very strange event, 9-11 in, in the US. Who, who, would, who could anticipate su such, a, such a move? Such a strange re reason. We will not know time to elaborate why, but this is really exactly after 9-11 everything started. And if we would not be ready by the time when it started, who would be guilty? 
it would not be ready. But we were ready. We were ready, and we used to make full use of this momentum, and we got it. So same for Georgia. Time will come. Believe me. Be optimistic and uh, do 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 your job. Uh, what else you can do? You cannot do job for others. You cannot. Inf you must influence others, of course. And we are helping you to do that. Some colleagues are not uh, not uh, so uh, so to say sure that uh, you, you 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 get it. You know. But we we believe, and some of us really believe. So I believe. Uh, well, situation maybe not as, as, as quickly developing as you'd like to see, but no one promised life will be easy. No one promised. So let's take it as it is. Well, Linus, uh, let me just say it's been a real pleasure and honor to sit here with you in Tbilisi, um, and I look forward to the next opportunity in Vilnius, Washington, or wherever the case may be. Please don't throw my friend Gigas Pavlonis in jail. That would be a bad move. Um, but uh, you wanted to respond to that? Or? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break for lunch, and you can cool off in some shade or inside. Uh, please get some lunch. We'll be back here at 2 o'clock.